So today I would be uh, speaking about uh, the, my objective of this presentation is basically I want to talk about speak professionally. Uh, that was the the uh, the pathway, uh, and also to deliver a presentation to you all of you, and I've been evaluated on the basis of that presentation and my delivery style. So ladies and gentlemen, today I brought uh, the dear Toastmaster of the day, dear Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Uh, today I brought you a, a gift for you. Why I'm saying a gift for you? Because uh, if you can see uh, on my left side, there's a shelf of books here. And when I say these, when I see these books, uh, there are so much of knowledge available around us. And I always try to keep this knowledge always with me so it can guide me towards my life, towards my personality, towards my objectives. And today I brought a gift from this shelf. So today I have a gift called this gift is the power of habit now this book i purchased uh, something like four to five years ago from an airport when i was traveling but i never get a chance to summarize this book for someone and once i learned in my life that you know when you read a particular book you learn a lot from this book but when you read it second time and when you are speaking about this book, you learn more. You learn more because now your role is changed as a teacher, not as a student. So try, this is one of the tips for this session is that, you know, whenever you read a book, you read it first, you learn everything what you want to learn. But the second role is also very important. Try it at your side that when you start teaching that book, if you believe in that book, if you like it, just try to teach it. I am telling you for my example, that when I read it again or read the summary of this book to present to you guys, I learn more than the first time because it tell, tells me lots of other stories. It gives me so much reflection time. So not with further delay, I just want to go to uh, my presentation. If you can see my screen, if you can, somebody can just uh, confirm me, my thumbs up, maybe. Yes. Yes, you can. So today, my presentation is about this particular book, which is about the power of habit. And when you look at the cover of any book, what you see here. And I want this session to be very interactive. I will ask questions. Uh, you can write on the chat if you want. If you can want to speak, you can speak also. So when you see a cover of a book, what you see here, what it shows? A mouse wheel. A mouse wheel, okay. And a mouse, a mouse is wheel. going here. That's a very good observation. And the next thing? The mouse has left the wheel. Mouse has left the wheel. <laughs> Very good observation, President. <laughs> did you did you notice this sentence? Why we do Why? what we do and how to change. Mm, oh. Like the mouse was uncomfortable. And then he, he figured out that like he can do something else. That's why he, he's running he away. To, yeah, he's running away. So that's it. I think that you read this book or probably learned about this book because you took my first slide. That's not a problem because we all are learners. <laughs> okay. And what else you saw here? That the book been sold over millions of copy already. It sold millions of copy. And when you read about, learn about this particular uh, statement, million copies, what it tells you as a person? 
<laughs> for me, when when something's reach a million, it's it's actually a a free shot to show that you already reach enough audiences or accomplished enough to be distinguished and acknowledgeable as uh, a general means a general or general or shared shared something amongst humans and that you probably probably fall into as well in some sort of way this is the 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 very important thing thank you for your contribution dear when you say that over a million copies for me it's really influenced me that you know one million of the world population at least bought this book like me they put it in the shelf there may be because the science says that you know the book readers are very less usually we brought these books but we sometimes we don't read it and it's there in the shelf and sometimes when you get a chance you can read it but one million people made an effort to buy this book and make some investment and also another thing which it tells me that it can influence me because it looks something interesting what the book title again tell us also is about the writer that's a very important thing that who is charles dwick who is this guy so one of the things i recently started to do whenever i read a blog or i read a book or i look at a movie i sometimes have a tendency to go back to to the person who wrote it even a movie these days actors are always important but it's important who wrote the screenplay that who is thinking about this particular subject so that was also another important thing so the first slide i want to introduce to you to the writer charles zwick uh, is a very recognized uh, writer uh, he was a new york investigation investigative reporter one of the uh, key things numerous award tv shows he came but one of the key things i learned about this guy after investigating that he wrote this book with a motivation when he lost some 10 kgs by just doing exercise in six months so i learned something about this person that he is writing this book from his personal experience so it's very important that you know when we uh, go through any book just to look that who wrote it and why he wrote it maybe for early readers it is uh, too early for you if you are a young reader if you are reading first or second book maybe the writer is not important for you but for me i think that it is important to know the background of the writer the book tells us the first question which he wrote in the cover why we do what we do and how to change faso already answered it that you know if you see the diagram of that mouse you know he was just the mouse wheel he wants to run away from it because he was doing constantly this and constantly he is doing it and he wants to change it so the book starts with this particular theory about 1960s about a study uh, the book tells us about there are there are scientists who are observing the mouse behavior so if you know the mouse behavior one of the key things if you put in front of a mouse a cheese the all the mouse will go to that per, that place because they want to eat it and they have the ability to sniff it but so if the, if you create a maze if you create a maze the mice will try to find this with their skills of their uh, smelling ability to find that cheese and if the maze is like turning 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 the mouse will come it will go to this turning try to find that cheese and the study shows that you know once he reached the cheese every day he follow the same route his brain will stuck on that route so every day when he wakes up the first thing 
he will do he will just take the same route and try to find that cheese so that was the start of the book and this study was mentioned in this book i talked about this particular change management thing and last time who moved my cheese last of my presentation was about that book it was also the same journey how the mind works so once the cheese has been moved a mouse will be in trouble because he's following the same routine did the human let me ask now the question to the floor does we as human we follow the same structure or no so let's remove the the cheese site let's put it ourselves as professionals as the today is talk uh, we are talking about pro we all are professionals in whatever fields we are what is our routine do we change our routine no no <laughs> we don't change our routine we are coming we, what as okay let's start with the starting of our day what we do first we a cup of coffee the, i think i think before the coffee is no. uh, wake up washing our go teeth. to the restroom <laughs> go to the restroom <laughs> go to the restroom okay that's habit maybe really, you can keep it on the side because that's a natural habit uh, but you know if you if you take the habit of let's say brushing the teeth yeah mm -hmm. everybody brush the teeth i think all of you mm -hmm. of course how That's many you, you, you can check you can check you can i can ask as a teacher teacher to all of you how many of you uh, have teeth problems what you have, you have a tooth ache or teeth problem mm -hmm. anybody have a teeth problem i i raised my hand first because over 20 years i think i had five or six root canals already <laughs> but we brush every day but we still have teeth issue but every time when we have an issue about our our teeth we try to find a better way of brushing it that i learned from my habit my routine also i want to clean my teeth in a such a way that i don't have to go to this dentist for one hour sitting there and he's drilling in my teeth yes or no so yes, that definitely. yes that particular routine which we follow it's not become our habit our routine it is our habit yeah it's a certain mm -hmm. thing we do everybody does and there are so many of these kind of habits which we do in our professional life our school life our college life our university life in our marriage life there are certain routines we follow because our brain it's fixed to do these things is it easy to change these habits we will come back to this question just let's just a small summary of this book the power of habit explains what an important role habits plays in our lives whether they are good ones like brushing our teeth and exercise or bad ones like smoking filled with research based finding and engaging anecdote the power habit not only explain exactly how habits are formed it provide easy tips for changing habits both on an individual and organizational level so when when you start reading this book just keep this objective that we want to learn about our routines do we want to change our routine at the individual level or at an organization level and this is one of the learnings you can have your own learning because every reader can learn something new from a book any book i'm just telling you because humans are created in the such a way now let's see how our brain works according to this book the habit exists to say save our brain effort now this particular statement 
is it true or false and i want examples there is no examples here i want you to give me an example nilaina i actually have i actually 100% agree with that since as uh, in, as one of the person who is called to design procedures at means at work on a professional level we 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 try to create habits in every single workers i mean like as we plant in trees we want everyone who plant trees to know the exact to to get the habits of watering is this certain amount of water every time to to plant trees so when during the procedures we also creating habits to all our team and so we look, we don't think of to win the plant we do 200 of them every day to be a big effort as we have to do it millions of times every year and remove the pain of thinking of that. So yes, yes habits we, our save brain, brain's effort. The idea is that, you know, each habit will tell our brain, this become a habit. Yes. Now I don't have to make an effort to it. Michelle, if you can tell me one of your habit, which becomes like this, that your brain doesn't make an effort. Yes, um, I can say um, it's a, a sustainable uh, action. So uh, before uh, switch off, switch off my laptop, I used the two. Um, to to delete all of my uh, uh, my my email that uh, it is uh, it's not uh, used or um, so, so it's to 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 empty to empty the, the empty garbage the so I used yeah. yeah so I used to do it uh, before I leave uh, and now it become a routine yeah it's become yes. a routine. And now every day, if I am leaving my office, I have to delete my emails because it's your brain accepted that routine. Yes. How many of these habits we have every day, each of us, where our brain doesn't make an effort? We just do it without thinking. There are so many of them. And that is your home. You can organ. You can check it out. But these habits can be good, and these habits can be bad. Like one of the habits which I am right now working on, uh, I can tell you right now that I have a habit since last fifteen years. Every day I come to the office, I take a black coffee without thinking. Because my brain tells me that this coffee will keep me awake. And it's, it's saving energy. So the other day, my wife was asking me, Karim, you know, you are now becoming hypertensive. And you are taking coffee every day. The black coffee. And I, I, I suddenly my brain start working. For hypertensive patients, coffee, black coffee can be dangerous. So you look at the transition. From what somebody reminded me about an habit which I was really used to from so many years that start using your brain now because you want to improve it. And that's just an, uh, it can be, you know, it's a, it's a very, uh, the example can be a little tough for a lot of people because it's a medical example, but there are so many other things, which is not a good habit, but we are doing it. How many of us in our offices, we have habits to delay things? Can be honest. Huh? Me, me, me. <laughs> okay. the president me, I delay said, a lot. <laughs> so. So the president said that in the Toastmaster Club, probably there are a lot of delays. You know, <laughs> the area team. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, yes. So we, this has become our habits now. You know, we, we are just delaying things. We are delaying because we, we eventually we do it. But we delay. We will do it. And the brain is not working in a certain way. Okay, let's understand scientifically what is happening here. The writer said in this book, there are three parts of this habit. Q, routine, and then you have a reward. Any habit which you create, these three parts are usually followed. There is a Q, you know, the line that we are going towards it. It become our routine, but eventually our habit have a reward also. Yes or no? Any habit which we just discussed, brushing the teeth, eventually the reward is, I want my teeth to be clean. My mouth clean. My mouth, my mouth clean. is clean. Also, we don't have a smell. Yes, no that's, that's usually no. the people, people, that's why the people do the, you know, brushing the teeth. Their reward is there. So when we, when we are doing any kind of habit, these three steps are usually important. There is another thing that, you know, we should have craving. Now, how many of you have craving is, you know, very uh, linked to the food thing. How many of you like sweets? Me, me, Alex. Chocolate, sweets, muffins, croissant, and chocolate croissant. Uh, sorry, if people are here right now who are planning for diet, these words can start the craving. You know, let's have a cake right now. Let's have a pastry right now. Why the craving is important? Yes. Craving lead us towards our habits. We have craving for things. Now let's have a bad habit. Cigarette smoking. Are any smokers are here? With all due respect to anyone, we are not judging anyone. But are there smokers here in, in the house? Okay, if any, you know the chain smokers once i asked one of my leaders he was a chain smoker and i asked him why you do it so karim it become my uh, habit now i have mm -hmm. to finish one box a day so but is is affecting your health yes you are right but my brain doesn't listen to it and there is a craving one is finish in half an hour, he will sit in a meeting. Next half an hour, he will go and take another, another cigarette. That craving is affecting his health. I am trying to control my sugar from last three months. And as you know, day before yesterday, and Muslims, uh, we celebrated Eid. And the Eid came, all my neighbors sent me sweets. So what was the craving? Take it. And after that day, two days, I'm still looking for some sweets because my habit is change. And that's a change cycle. So what is, what is in eventually, I already been given a sign that now I completed 20 minutes already. I need to tell you some of the important things that you know how, this book tells us that you can change your habit if you want to try a new habit you have to replace your habit with something different so i just told you that you know about the three steps the three steps now imagine that if a cigarette smoker he will not change his habit because he is smoking from last 10 years until unless he have a, some uh, some disease and the doctor said that you know it's the limit usually at that part people stops but if you want to stop it you know in the middle so
so then you have to tell a reward which replace cigarette reward mm -hmm. the cigarette is creating a craving so the writer says why don't we replace it with let's say exercise so five minutes if i want to uh, to if i am taking my time for cigarette because it's create that kind of mechanism that my brain is quiet or something why don't i just replace it with uh, some music the other day i was feeling so tired of doing things i just put a five minute instrumental of yani we all does how many of you like instrumentals yani or some musics in, uh, interventions we does yeah if there is a bad habit if you identify it that cigarette is or you are delaying work or uh, some people have very very bad habits also like sometimes people are very aggressive they become you know people if you ask you know the, the husbands or fathers or mothers who are hitting their family members and there is a there is a scientist theory about it you ask them that you know what it gives you they said it become my habit i become aggressive i become angry and i start hitting people i said what is the therapy the therapy is replace it the reward the, the reward is what in the end it is a regret in the end everybody who hits someone you ask them and there is a theory about it they all have regrets and that regret can be replaced by happiness by doing something at that time so there is a theory in one of the culture they say that when you are angry just take a reward of a glass of water you will be calmer and that is a very historical theory that when you are angry somebody is making you really angry go from there take a glass of water you'll be fine because it gives you that part that reward that you are calm so that was the one of the key things about this book my final message is one of the things he said the golden rule and the golden rule i told you already you can't extinguish a bad habit you can only change it so the best thing what the message of this book is identify replace your bad habits with a good habit and a good habit can come only with reward but you have to find what is that reward thank you very much dear toastmaster Thank you.